Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the pathophysiology of HIV. But before we do that, let's review the question in our previous series. And that question is, how will you differentiate between a nucleoside and a nucleotide? And the answer is, for the nucleotide, it has the phosphate group, the pentose sugar, and the nitrogenous base. Whilst the nucleoside has only the pentose sugar and the nitrogenous base, meaning it lacks the phosphate group. Congratulations to all those who got it right. Okay, let's move ahead and look at the pathophysiology of HIV. In our previous series, we learned that HIV is a single-stranded RNA virus. All right, so when you look at this diagram, we are starting with the HIV virion. And when we say virion, what does it mean? It means the infectious form of HIV outside the host cell. So we have the HIV virion, which is containing the single-stranded RNA. The HIV virion, with the help of its GP120, that is glycoprotein 120, on its outer membrane, binds to the CD4 receptors on the host T helper lymphocyte, as well as the CD4 co-receptors. You should know that if the virion does not bind to the CD4 receptor and the co-receptor at the same time, it will not be able to enter into the host cell, that is the T helper lymphocyte. It will need to bind to both the CD4 receptor and the CD4 co-receptor. On the whole cell before it can be allowed entry into the whole cell I believe we get that then the question is what are these CD4 co-receptors they come in two forms we have the CXCR4 as a co-receptor and we have the CCR5 as a co-receptor CCR simply stands for cellular thermokine receptor so CCR simply stands for cellular chemokine receptor. There are two types. We have the CSCR4 and the CCR5. One thing you should know about these co-receptors is that they are special. They have their affinity. If you look at the CSCR4 co-receptor, you can only find them on the T helper cells, on the T helper lymphocytes. But if you take the CCR5, you can find them on all other CD4 cells, like the T lymphocytes, that's the T, like the T helper lymphocytes, the dendritic cells, the macrophages, and the monocytes. You can find them there. There's something unique about the CD4 co-receptors. In a minute set of population, there has been a research into the development of resistance with regards to the CD4 co-receptors. And these arise from a mutation occurring in the co-receptors, specifically the CCR5. So when you have a CCR5 undergoing a homozygous mutation, then it means you are going to see a complete, a complete resistance. There will be a complete resistance. But if it is heterozygous, for heterozygous mutation in the CCR5, you will see a partial resistance. There will be a partial resistance. And if there is partial resistance, it only tends to slow the progress of the HIV. But if you have a complete resistance emanating from a homozygous mutation in the CCR5 co-receptor, and then such an individual will not develop HIV, meaning the HIV virion will need to bind to this co-receptor, which in this case is undergoing homozygous mutation. And if it does not bind to both the receptor and the co-receptor, it will not be allowed entry into the whole cell. So if there is mutation in the CD4 co-receptor, and we are talking about CCR5, the HIV virion cannot get into the cell, and meaning it cannot infect the host immune cells. I believe we get that. All right, let's move on. Now, we have the virion binding to the CD4 receptor and the co-receptor. And from there, what do you have? 
it will be allowed entry into the host cell that's the t helper lymphocyte so once it gets into the host cell as we are seeing the single stranded rna will be released into the host cell as we are seeing here the moment it's released into the host cell it will encode the enzyme we call reverse transcriptase and what is the function of the reverse transcriptase reverse transcriptase will facilitate the formation of a complementary strand in relation to the rna in that the rna becomes the template on which the dna primer will be formed so once the reverse transcriptase lays the complementary strand it will enhance the formation of a 3,5 phosphodiester bond leading to the production of a double stranded dna and that double stranded dna we call it the proviral dna because it is coming from the virus it is not coming from the whole cell so we'll call it the proviral dna so this is what we're having this double stranded structure we are seeing we'll call it the proviral dna once the proviral dna is formed quickly the virus would encode for another enzyme and that enzyme we call it the integrase strand transfer and what the integrase strand transfer does is that it integrates this proviral dna into the host genome that's the host dna as you can see so the black s is the host genome or the host dna and the red and the blue as you can see from here is the proviral dna so with the help of the integrase trans transfer the proviral dna is integrated into the host genome that's the host dna so we have the red and the blue as you can see here being integrated into the black that's the host dna and once that takes place the host dna undergoes several replication which are error prone which are error prone and because these replications are error prone it gives rise to several billions of copies with different genome and with that it will be difficult to isolate such several billions of genome before a vaccine can be produced that is why it is difficult to treat the hiv infection because the replication of the virus which takes place in the host dna is error prone now once the error replication takes place it results in the production of immature viral polyproteins and once these immature viral proteins are produced as you can see here it encodes that's the virus it encodes another enzyme we call the protease and what does the protease do the protease enhances the burden that's the cleavage of the viral polyproteins into viral proteins we call virion so how does the protease do that the protease cleaves the viral polyproteins at several sites almost about nine sites that is we are looking at the gag and the gag pool polyproteins into virions the protease cleaves the immature viral polyproteins that is the gag and the gag pole polyproteins into the smaller proteins we call the viral proteins and these viral proteins would undergo maturation to become known as the mature virion so in short the protease is responsible for the burden and maturation of the virions meaning for the burden it will cleave the immature viral polyproteins that's the gag and the gag pole polyproteins into what the mature virions and these mature virions are liberated into circulation where they affect other cells or other structures and these constitute the pathophysiology of the hiv i believe we've learned something new today but before we end the session i have a question for you the question is why does hiv belong to the family of viruses known as retroviridae kindly leave your answer in the commentary session kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel like share and also comment the next concept you would like to see on my channel my name is dr Dell. 
and this is concept in medicine bye bye